Okay, now we'll go over some practice problems dealing with friction. And here's the first one. A car is moving at 90 kilometers per hour. The driver slams on the brake and skids to a stop. So immediately we know this is the initial velocity, 90 kilometers per hour, and it skids to a stop so the final velocity is zero. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road is 0.8, and we want to know how far the car will skid before stopping. All right, I like to do things in uh, metric units, so I'm going to take this initial velocity, 90 kilometers per hour, and I'm going to multiply that uh, in order to convert it to meters per second. So I multiply by 1,000 meters per kilometer, and the kilometers cancel out, times one hour per 3600 seconds, and the hours cancel out, and I'm left with meters per second. And so I pull out the calculator, 90 times 1,000 divided by 3600 comes out to 25. So that's the initial velocity. Now, picture the, the car coming to a stop here. This little step of the algebra is pretty important. So here's the road, and, and here's the car. And being able to see this with the forces is important too. I'm trying to draw a little Porsche here. Okay. All right, so here's the car. It's skidding to a stop. Now it's moving forward. That does not mean that there is a forward force on the car. If you draw an arrow here, that might represent the velocity of the car moving forward, but don't confuse that with a force. I'm not even, even going to draw that. We know it's moving forward. I'm going to draw the forces, and these are the forces. Obviously, the weight of the car down, then the force of the road up, that's what we call in the normal force, and friction is slowing it down. Now, clearly there was some forward force at some time to get this car moving forward, but that's not happening now. Right now it's skidding to a stop. There's nothing pushing it forward. The, the driver has his foot off the gas and on the brakes, so there's, there's no forward force. It's only friction acting backward. Now, you should be able to see that the normal force and the weight are going to be equal and opposite, so they'll cancel out. So the net force in this case is just friction. And then here's the algebra that I was talking about. F net is MA. In this case, the net force is simply friction. So I'll just say friction has to equal MA in this problem. And friction is always mu times the normal force. And the normal force in this problem is the weight. And weight, remember, is always MG. So in this case, N is equal to mg. So I can say mu mg equals ma. And then the mass cancels out on both sides. That allows us to solve this problem without knowing the mass. After that cancels, I'm just left with mu times g is equal to a. So I'm going to just come up here and continue this, and I'll write a is equal to mu times g, and I can calculate that. We're given a value for mu, it's 0.8, and of course we know g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and mu has no units, so 0.8 times 9.8 is uh, 7.84 meters per second squared. And now I can calculate the distance. I don't have the time that it takes to stop. I just have the initial and final velocity and the acceleration. And this equation will work. V squared is V0 squared plus 2A delta X. And I'll just do the algebra to solve that for delta X. Delta X ends up being V squared minus V0 squared over 2A. And so let's put in the numbers. V, V there is my final velocity, so that's zero. V zero is the initial velocity, so that and the initial velocity squared. So the initial velocity, remember, was 25. So this is 25 meters per second squared. All that over two times a, and we found a here. 
7.84 meters per second squared. And we just do the arithmetic there and of course you uh, it's appropriate to use a calculator to do that and it comes out to 40 meters. Okay, now let's look at the next problem. This problem is almost identical. The car is moving at 90 kilometers per hour and the driver slams on the brakes and skids to a stop. But this time the road is wet and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road is 0.5. So we'll see, when we solve this, we'll see the difference between braking on a dry road and on a wet road. So again, let's take the initial velocity. I'm going to do this kind of fast now. 90 kilometers per hour. Uh, the same numbers here. If we just multiply by 1,000 meters per kilometer and one hour per 3,600 seconds, we end up with 25 meters per second as before. And then remember, once again, this car is skidding to a stop. So as the car brakes, there's no forward force on it. It's uh, just being decelerated by the friction. So there's friction slowing it down. The weight of the car, which is mg, and the normal force cancel out, so the net force in this case is simply the friction. So if I say F net equals MA, and again this is just like we did before, but that the, the math through here is, is important, so I'm going to show it to you again. In this case, the net force is friction. So I can say friction equals MA in this case. And friction is always mu times the normal force and in this case the normal force is equal to mg so I get mu times mg equals ma and m cancels so I'm just left with a being equal to mu times g so I'll say a is mu times g and mu in this case is 0.5 that's where the problem becomes different from the previous one so 0.5 times 9.8 meters per second squared comes out to a smaller acceleration. I end up with 4.9 meters per second squared. And with a smaller acceleration, you can't stop as quickly. So when we take this equation here, v squared is v0 squared plus 2a delta x, and we solve this for the distance delta x, that's going to be v squared minus v0 squared over 2a and let's put in the numbers here uh, v final velocity is 0 v0 squared is once again 25 meters per second squared over 2a so it's 2 times 4.9 and um, you can actually I didn't do this before but you can actually make this a negative number here negative 4.9 meters per second squared and the reason you can make it negative is if you think of the initial velocity here as positive and the car is moving in this direction if you say that direction is positive velocity then the opposite direction has to be the negative direction so my acceleration here which is to the left if you think of it as a vector you need to include the negative sign and when you do that your negative signs work out you end up with a positive number for the distance and in this this case it comes out to 64 meters so in the previous problem you might remember when the coefficient of friction was 0.8 on the dry road it stopped in 40 meters so on the wet road it takes a significantly longer distance to stop. That's why you need to take that into account when you're driving. Wet roads don't have as much friction. So you can't accelerate as quickly and more importantly you can't stop as quickly and can't turn as easily when the roads are wet.